Your homework is to memorize this and write it 15 times. Welcome to the coolest, hippest half hour of fun on TV. This is Brain Stew with Jennifer Pulley. Hey, you on the couch, quit being crabby and check out what's stewing on this week's show. Brain Stew visits the Virginia Marine Science Museum to stuff our brain with facts about crustaceans. You know, critters like crab, lobsters, and shrimp. Hungry yet? Well, we have a regular menu, including an excellent experiment and a visit to the library. Don't get crabby and turn the channel. Brain Stew is up next. No, 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 cut, 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 cut. I mean, I look ridiculous. I've got this hat, I mean, these glasses here, the squeaky crab. People are gonna laugh at me. I, I feel crabby. Who are you calling crabby? I'm not crabby. Let's start this over. Three, two. Hey guys, welcome to Brain Stew. Now that I'm not being so much of a crab, let's get our show rolling. This week, we're gonna stuff our brains with animals called invertebrates. What are invertebrates? That's a good question. Invertebrates are animals without backbones, like uh, crabs, um, insects, worms, and spiders. Now, you and I, mammals, have backbones. Like this, you know, we're called vertebrates. Now, birds, amphibians, reptiles, fish, they are called vertebrates because they do have a backbone. You got it? I got it, I got it. So today, we're talking about invertebrates. Now, even though I acted like a crab just a minute ago, I'm not a real crab. In order to be a real crab, you have to be an arthropod. What did you say? An artho what? An arthropod. Arthropods are animals, invertebrate animals, that have a shell called an exoskeleton. Their skeleton is outside of their body, unlike ours, which is inside our body. Arthropods are also cool because they have numerous appendages, you know, like arms and legs, and they have movable joints. They're really cool. So basically what I'm saying is arthropods have lots of legs. Look, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, they got lots of legs. Now there are six million species of arthropods in our world, and, and crabs aren't the only arthropods. You've got insects, spiders, scorpions, and even horseshoe crabs. Now the closest relatives to the crab, right here, are lobsters, shrimp, and even barnacles. All these critters together are called crustaceans. Get this, there are 26,000 species of crustaceans. Most of those guys live in the ocean. Today, we are at the Virginia Marine Science Museum in Virginia Beach, Virginia, to learn all about crustaceans. If you thought I was being crabby, check out this monster crab. I wouldn't mess with him. He's the world's largest crab. He's 75 feet wide and 12 feet high. And if he were real, he could feed over 200,000 people. Yummy. Speaking of eating, you would need 35,000 pounds of melted butter, 45,000 lemons, and a school gym filled with cocktail sauce in order to complete your crab feast. I'm ready to eat. Oh, we're not stuffing our face right now? Oh yeah, that's right, I forgot. We're stuffing our brain with facts about crustaceans. Well, but then can we eat? Because you know how crabby I get when I'm hungry. Hey Chris, what's up? Hey, good to see you again. I know, it's been a while. Yeah, it has Guys, been. This is my friend Chris, and she knows tons about crustaceans. In fact, she helped set up this exhibit here at the Virginia Marine Science Museum. It's called Claws, <laughs> Crabs and Their Kin. And it's all about crustaceans. It's so cool. Chris, now let me get this straight. Okay. Invertebrates are animals without backbones. That's right. And they're different from us. That's right, because we now, got one, right? That's here. right, we have one. Now, crabs and insects are invertebrates. Correct. Correct. Crabs and insects are arthropods. Correct. Crabs are crustaceans and insects aren't. Right. Insects are insects. How are crustaceans different from arthropods? Well, if we take a look over here, I've got some arthropods, including a crustacean okay. up here. And you can see our spider and scorpion. And we've got insects and the blue crab. And we'll notice if we take a close look at our blue crab, you'll see it's moving its mouth around. And down under there are some special mouth parts called mandibles. And they use the mandibles to chew their food. And then just above the mouth parts, you'll see two little, look like antennae. And in fact, that's what they're called. They're actually two pairs of antennae they used to sense with. What makes crustaceans different from their relatives is that they have two pairs of antennae 
you'll notice that the insects only have one, and in fact the scorpions and spiders don't have any at all. And those mandibles I was talking about, you're not going to find those in the scorpions or spiders or horseshoe crabs either. But these are all invertebrates? Yes. They're all octopods? Yes. But that's what makes them different. They have mm -hmm. four little antennas. Right. So we got two pairs of antennae and yep. we've got the mouth parts called mandibles under there to chew up the food. Crustaceans. Chris, that's such a weird name. I mean, why do they call these animals crustaceans? Are they crusty? People that make up words in science like to use a lot of old Latin words. Uh -huh. And the word crustacean comes from the Latin crust or shell. And it refers to that hard outer uh, shell-like structure that we really call an exoskeleton in crustaceans and other arthropods. So the, the uh, exoskeleton really means outside skeleton and it provides the structure where all the muscles are attached to inside and of course obviously being somewhat hard it protects the crustacean from anything that might try to bite it. That sort of thing. And we have our skeleton is inside our body. Our skeleton's inside but these guys have skeletons really that are on the outside. That's cool. Crustacean. Now I know like in the summertime if, if I get too much sun I, I, my skin kind of flakes and mm -hmm. peels away. Do crustaceans have skin like that that kind of flakes away or? Well they have that exoskeleton and it doesn't really flake in little pieces like our skin does. In fact they molt or shed their whole exoskeleton uh, every so often. What is molting? Molting is a process that allows them to grow because that exoskeleton is a fixed size. It, it, it's rigid and won't grow with the innards of the animal. And in fact, I've got some pieces here, and you can pick one up if you want. These oh, cool. are uh, bits of exoskeleton that have been molted by one of our blue crayfish. So th there's a certain process they go through, their body triggers some changes that causes a new exoskeleton to form under the old. So they just leave this behind them? Yep, and once the new one is all ready, the old one splits and comes off. The tricky part is that they still need to grow, so that new exoskeleton, when they first come out of the old, old shell or exoskeleton, the new one is soft and they take water in and pump up to a bigger size, and then they create empty space to grow into. If you've ever eaten soft shell crabs, you were eating, you were eating a crab that had just shed, but had not had time for its new exoskeleton to harden. So it had just molted, mm -hmm. and it didn't have a, a hard exoskeleton. Right. I mean, I've seen bits and pieces mm -hmm. of um, their exoskeletons on the beach, and, uh, and I've also seen shells on the beach. Right. Um, are animals like clams and, and these types of animals the same as a crustacean? No, they are invertebrates. They don't have a backbone, but they belong to a different phylum. Remember, our crustaceans are arthropods. Yeah. The clams, and, and this is a cockle here or an oyster, yeah. uh, would all be mollusks. And the mollusks have a very uh, dense, very heavy shell, and the shell actually grows with them. And remember, in a crustacean and yeah. other arthropods, they molt. They molt sure. periodically because that shell or exoskeleton doesn't grow with them. Now, this uh, structure, this exoskeleton, is much lighter in weight. Sure. Uh, than the shells that we find on mollusks. And that light weight and flexibility allows the uh, arthropods and the crustaceans to be much more mobile than what sure. you expect to see in a clam or a cockle, which really just kind of sit around. Hey you, don't go away. You know how crabby I've been today. Chris and I will be back after the break to stuff your brain with more information on crabs, lobster, and shrimp. I was really not in a very good mood, and my director said that I was being crabby. Which crab is crabby as well? Well, here in our area, most people would probably tell you the blue crab. And like crabs that that uh, have sharp, 
strong pinchers and quick reactions, you can see that this female blue crab is not really pleased that I have picked her up. She is hot. Right. And so you can see how she's, she's uh, looking forward to, to giving me a pinch. And you'll notice that I'm holding her from behind so she can't uh, get hold of my fingers. These pinchers are uh, very sharp and strong and could cut my finger, not cut my finger off, That's but, right, would, but would puncture and, and give In me fact, a she painful has wound. pinched you this before. This one has pinched me before, so we're, uh, we're going to be very careful with holding her today. But this, uh, this is where the term crabby comes from, this aggressive behavior. And you can see that she's not intimidated by the fact that I'm a little bit bigger than she yeah. is. It, she's not going to back away uh, just because I'm a bit larger, and she relies on those pinches for protection. Why are they called blue crabs? Well, if you get a close look at the appendages on this crab, you'll see where that name comes from. Look at that beautiful blue color. Now, the shell, or the, the what's called the carapace of the exoskeleton Can here, mm -hmm. uh, is more of an olive color, but the, it would be out here on the limbs where you would see that bright blue, and in fact, their scientific name, Calonectes sapidus, one of those Latin root kind of names yeah. again, means beautiful swimmer, savory and tasty, but you can see where the beautiful comes from with these colors here. Isn't that gorgeous? When you look at the little crab that's behind you here, we know that all crabs are not as crabby as the blue crab, that something like this hermit crab, when I pick it up, Really, uh, you can see that it's not making any effort to pinch me. Not like that one. No. Uh, the hermit crab, we know it doesn't have a shell of its own, relies on this old mollusk shell more for protection, really, uh, so much than its claw. So it will... Can uh, it pinch? It can pinch. And this one has pinched me also uh, when I wasn't it's paying. a dangerous job. Right? I know, I know. Uh, but they'll pull back in the shell uh, for protection rather than being so aggressive with the claws as you would see the blue crab doing. Oh, she's crabby. Now, Chris, you kept calling that blue crab over there a she, a mm -hmm. she, a she. How can you tell the difference between a female and a male crab? Well, there are two ways. One is the color of the claws. So if you were to look at the crab that we see right here, You'll notice that we've got the same colors that we were seeing Pretty on the body, blue, mm -hmm. right? blues and the olives, coming all the way out uh, to the uh, end of the pinchers on those claws, except for you can see just a little bit of maybe a darker color there. But when you look at a female, you will notice, as some people say, that it looks like she dipped her claws in fingernail polish, that she's got orange or reddish pinchers, and so that's certainly a very distinctive way to tell whether you're looking at a male or female. The second way, which is what most people are familiar with, is looking at the underneath side. In the blue crab, there's a difference in what that looks like from the male to the female. I'm going to push the button here for our exhibit, and you'll take a look down, and you can now see the same crabs we were looking at above, we're seeing them on the underneath side. Now when I tell you that a male crab looks like it's got a picture of the Washington Monument on its belly. The one up at the top. Uh -huh. And a female looks like she's got a picture of the dome of the Washington Capitol on hers, then you should be able to tell which is which. biggest crustacean or the largest crustacean in the world or that you have here at this exhibit? Well, the biggest one we have here in the Claws exhibit is this sheep crab. This is a female sheep crab. And big, the largest that, that they know that these animals get, if we picked her up and held her out, now she's not this big, but the yeah. biggest ones they've measured of sheep crabs. If we could pick one up and spread those claws apart, it would spread two feet across. Wow. Now that sounds pretty big, doesn't it? Yeah, and she, she is big. Yeah, she's big. She's in the spider family group, but there's a there's another kind of spider crab called the Japanese spider crab, which is the biggest in the world. In the world. All right, tell me how big we're talking here. Let, let's use a tape measure again. All right, let's. Now, if we picked up a Japanese spider crab, mm -hmm. well, I wouldn't do that, but from claw to claw, right? How big so we we're talking? It. We're talking big. Why don't you grab the end of my tape measure and back up, and I'll tell you this where to stop. Keep, keep going. going. Keep no, going. Keep, more? Keep going. Keep going. More? A little bit more. Almost Mo there. What? You can stop right there. 12 feet. 12 feet from claw to claw? From claw to claw, if you think about spreading those claws apart. Bigger than we could hold up. I don't want to see that 
Japanese spider crab. Well, or get near you it. You don't have to worry around here because they are they live in the Pacific Ocean. So Chris, that Japanese spider crab is the longest in the world length. Right, if we measure squat to Leg tip to leg tip, 12 feet across. Now what crustacean is the largest one in weight? The one we're probably a little more familiar with, and that's the American or North American lobster. Mm. Right? Yeah. We all enjoy eating. The ones we usually eat maybe weigh about, oh, a pound, pound and a half. Yeah. It is what most people would be familiar with from a restaurant, but the biggest one ever caught weighed about 47 pounds. 47 pounds? It's about three feet long yeah. and weighed 47 pounds. You know, that's like, that's like half of a seventh grader. Half of this. You're heavy. <laughs> Okay, Chris, I want to meet that crab that you were talking about with the big old claw that waves it back and forth. Well, we've got some right here in this habitat. These are sand fiddler crabs, and you'll notice there's some that have two small claws of the same size, but then there's some that have one little claw and one big claw. That guy right there has got a That's huge right. And you're claw. right, that is a guy. The oh, male fiddler crab has the one enlarged claw, and it really isn't good for much other than trying to attract females. He uh, has a special little wave dance that he does with that claw, and somehow or another, a female will decide that one male waves his claw better than another. And then he thinks he's really hip, and so right. he'll come and, over. <laughs> and so they, he has uh, certain messages he sends to say, okay, you know, come on down into my burrow, or uh, come on over here and meet me over here. So in this that's little the only purpose sand. then for that claw? The, the big claw, the, the little claw is what they use for feeding, but the big claw really is too awkward, I think, for them to be uh, very good at, at picking up picking up food. Hmm, and what about this hermit crab here? Yeah, this hermit crab is a land hermit crab, so that's something neat too. We know that there are some crustaceans that don't live in the water. Yep. Uh, this is one that, that does not, and it uses its claw to actually help it climb trees. This so, one right here. Mm -hmm, this big claw, it's got, actually you see one's a little bit bigger than the other, but it does yeah. have a pair of claws. And another name for this land hermit crab is the tree crab because of their habit of climbing. But they will use those claws to help grab and pull and up. And he'll pull himself and his shell up into a tree. Up into a tree. Well, Chris, you stuffed my brain with crustacean information. Oh, I'm glad I can help you out. I appreciate it so much. Now, up next, Brain Stew shows you an experiment that you can try at home. And we take a trip to the library to stuff your brain again with more crustacean information. We'll be right back. How do people and animals hear? Here's an easy experiment to show you how. All you need is a metal spoon and about two feet of kite string. Tie the handle of the spoon in the middle of the string. Wrap the ends of the string around both of your index fingers. Oh, and make sure both strings are the same length. Next, put both of your index fingers in the ear. <coughs> Finally, lean over so the spoon hangs freely and tap it against the edge of your table. Wow, that sounds like a church bell. Hey, how did that happen? Let me tell you. The metal in the spoon starts to vibrate when struck. These vibrations are transmitted up the string to the ears. The ability to hear is due to one's ability to detect vibrations. Objects must vibrate to produce a sound. The vibrating object causes the air around it to move. Vibrating air molecules enter the ear and strike the eardrum, causing it to vibrate. These vibrations continue to travel through bones and fluids in the ear until they reach a nerve that sends a message to the brain. Although crabs do not have ears, they can still detect sounds caused by vibrations. Hollow hairs on the outside of their bodies pick up vibrations created by sounds or movement in the water. The animals also use the hairs for feeling, tasting, and smelling. 
You know, after learning all about crabs and their kin, I'm beginning to like my hat and these glasses and the squeaky crab friend here, but it's funny. No one wants to be around me. Should I lose the hat and all this stuff? You know, all this talk about seafood is making me hungry. Remember when I tried to eat that crab on top of the Virginia Marine Science Museum? Yeah, he was a little bit too big, so I decided to go for a smaller portion. I'm here at Rockefeller's Restaurant in Virginia Beach, right on Rudy Inlet. See that inlet right there? It goes right on out to the Atlantic Ocean, and that's where you find all those crustaceans. Now, Rockefeller specializes in crustaceans, especially shrimp, crabs, and lobster. Take a look at what they've brought me. <laughs> Yummy! All right, we've got our lobster. Hello! We've got shrimp, steam, and fries. We've got snow crab legs. Now, these are just his legs. Think about what the crab must have looked like. We also have hard shell crab and soft shell crab. Remember what Chris said about soft shell crabs? They've just molted. Their exoskeleton is soft, unlike this guy's right here. So they're very easy to eat. Oh, and they're really good. Mm, sorry. We've also got oysters and clams. OK, pop quiz for you. Which of the following is not a crustacean? Crab, lobster, shrimp, crab, crab, oysters, clams. Well, if you guess the oysters and the clams, you're correct. They are not crustaceans. They're mollusks, remember? Their shell grows with them. They don't move like crabs do. Anyway, my food's starting to get cold, and um, I'm real hungry because you know how crabby I've been all day, so I really need to eat. But hey, stick around. No, this is my food. This is all mine. Stick around for next week. You never know where we'll be with another edition of Crab Stew. I mean, Brain Stew. Oh, bye. <laughs> Oh, and make sure both and both both <laughs> both strings are the same. Okay, Chris, I still have some questions for you okay. about these crustaceans. I need to know why blue crab. Mm, no, sorry. Mm -hmm. Is anybody coming around? Am I attracting anybody? It's real attractive. <laughs> tie the tie the middle of the spoon and no. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Try to handle the spoon. Okay. Now there are six million species of ostrich. All this talk about seafood is making me hungry. And what kind of body? <laughs> In what body of water are most blue crabs? You guessed the oysters and the clams, you're right. Remember, they're mollusks. Their shell grows with. Remember, they're mollusks. Their shell grows with.